Yeah, this is Glenn Young, and today we're going to take a look at some of the equipment and tools that are used when multi-pitch climbing. So let's take a look over here on the left-hand side. We have a 60 meter, 9.2 millimeter width climbing rope, dynamic climbing rope by Petzl. That's a great rope. It has really good handling. Moving over, these are some items that I include attached to my harness. You know, I work as a guide, so I might be bringing a few things that uh, recreational climbers might not always bring. This is a personal anchor system or uh, Black Diamond's version of that. I typically carry it clipped into my harness rather than permanently attached. Um, I just find that that keeps things a little bit more out of the way and less likely to get tangled. This is my belay plate. There's a nice round stock uh, screw gate locking carabiner that I'll clip in and that's where the rope will run over as I'm belaying. And then a small D carabiner that clips in directly to the master point on the anchor when I'm belaying from the top of a multi-pitch. Small D locking carabiner with a four and a half foot long piece of five millimeter sterling brand cord tied into a loop with a double fisherman's knot. That's used as a backup when I'm rappelling. Uh, this I may not always carry, but if I'm belaying two clients at the same time, I'll often carry this. This is called an OVO by Camp. It's a, a belay device that works really well for belaying from the top and has very little friction when pulling through, so it's a little bit better on my elbows when belaying two clients simultaneously from the top of a multi-pitch climb. Nut tool, always important when you're doing trad slash traditional routes. Four locking carabiners. I uh, use these for a variety of purposes. First and foremost, I use it to attach myself at the anchor. I use it for some types of transitions, and I may use these for little bits of short roping on the way to the climb, or when descending from the climber, or sometimes even between pitches. And then I have my little emergency cache, which includes another friction hitch that's the same dimensions as the one mentioned previously. It's a small rescue knife, so I can cut cord or material if I need to fashion a rappel, and then uh, a malleon slash rapide slash quick link that I use if I need to beef up an anchor or make my own rappel anchor. And then I'll clip on a full strength uh, non-locking carabiner, but that's really small, um, and that goes on the very, very back haul loop of my harness. A cell phone these days is an amazing device. This is just about all I carry for emergency communication in a place that has good cell phone reception, and I also carry um, uh, a lot of times my gu guide notebook is on there that I make notes in and uh, route descriptions, emergency uh, numbers, everything like that. If I am carrying my cell phone as my primary, I usually try to also download that on my partner or my client's phones so there's some sort of backup and I oftentimes typically carry a small power bank as well to be able to recharge that in the field. Chalk bag, I won't carry that in the Alpine but really great for most multi-pitch routes. A pair of uh, belay slash rappel gloves. Oftentimes I use these prim primarily on the descent, but sometimes when belaying two clients at once, it's nice to have a little more protection for my hands working with all that rope. A harness. In this case, I'm using a Black Diamond Solution Guide Harness. It's a newer harness. It's really comfortable and it's very abrasion resistant. Hard hat. This one's my camp. It's a good balance between uh, weight, it's fairly lightweight and durability. This thing is, uh, I have another one that's lasted for a lot of years and still in great shape. I have a pair of uh, low volume approach shoes. Um, I will make sure that I don't carry the, a super lightweight pair of approach shoes because I find the super lightweight version doesn't allow me to have a lot of control um, if I'm short roping clients. But recreational climbing, I use really, really lightweight Evolve um, approach shoes. They pack down to nothing. Um, and I'll approach the climb and descend with those. I have a locking carabiner on the back of those. Locker isn't essential, but just you know adds a little bit of comfort knowing that you're not going to accidentally lose those essential shoes that you might have uh, to use for a mile or more descent. Climbing shoes. I really like TC Pros for a multi-pitch trad climbing shoe. I'll often use them for alpine climbing shoes if there's a lot of pitches of fifth class. Otherwise, I'll typically climb in boots or a pair of uh, moccasins that slip on and off really easy for those um, shorter sections of technical fifth class. But for uh, multi-pitch trad routes, those are awesome shoes. Um, some, something to carry liquid in. In this case, this is a, a Hydro Flask 750 milliliter bottle, and that's enough for most routes in most conditions. Um, if it's really hot outside, 
uh, or I'm going to be climbing in the sun for most of the day or it's a really long day, then uh, I might carry maybe double that, up to a liter and a half. But 750 to a liter, 750 mils to one full liter is usually enough. Some food. And it's always important to have some spare layers. So I usually have a puffy layer. A wind or a rain jacket of some kind is really good, depending on what the weather forecast is and the environment I'm in. And then uh, a hat. One thing that I don't have here that I consider absolutely essential for all rock climbing is a, a, a headlamp. I have a, a Zebra Light, I think it's an MK4, uh, which is 1200 lumens on its highest setting and uh, around 400 lumens on its medium setting. It has a rechargeable battery and on its medium setting I think it lasts 40 to 50 hours and I usually bring two batteries for that. And it packs down really small. I'll oftentimes also carry a really small backup, like a Petzl Zipka light, which is like 250 lumens um, and weighs nothing in case either a client's headlamp goes out, my headlamp goes out, or one of us forgot a headlamp. That's a super important piece of safety gear. Over here I've included a few items that I typically give to my follower if they don't have them with them. I'll usually bring these just to make sure we have them. A lot of times it's nice to get a, a lead belay on a grigri. One grigri per party is enough, but that adds some comfort, especially if you have someone who's a relatively new to belaying. Another personal anchor system or some kind of other tether, it could be a double length runner, that'll hand to the other person to make sure everyone has a way to attach to an anchor that doesn't involve the rope. Mostly this is used just on rappel or occasionally at transitions in an alpine environment or a complex multi-pitch route. An ATC, that's what we're gonna rappel on. Nice round stock carabiner can be nice. And then uh, another locking carabiner. This is a, a um, Magnetron carabiner by Black Diamond. And I like these specifically when I'm short roping, I'll attach someone with just a single locking carabiner like this that really can't come undone. But otherwise, screw gate is fine. And if you're gonna be clipped in for a long time um, into the middle of a rope, then two screw gates is enough to add the security that you need. Okay, we're gonna continue taking a look at the technical gear that you might wanna bring with you on a multi-pitch trad climb. What I'm about to show is also a really good rack to bring with you if you happen to be a first time trad climber or if you're looking at buying a rack and you don't have one currently. We'll start at the top and starting on your right here, we have a number four Black Diamond Camelot. All of these cams here happen to be Camelots from Black Diamond, uh, which is a really good first cam to buy. They're a good balance of durability and weight People are really familiar with them and there's whole guidebooks set up on their sizing. So number four is the largest size. I just have a single number four cam. There are certain routes where you might want more, but again, this is a general rack that works well for uh, starting out, purchasing your first trad rack. Then we have two number three cams, two number twos, two number ones, 2.75s, 2.5s, 2.4s, and 2.3s, and that's the smallest in this particular rack. And then we go down to a selection of nuts. These nuts here um, are the, the uh, Black Diamond, I believe it's uh, size number five to 11 nut, but I'll take a, take a look, is a really good first uh, nut set to buy. This particular nut set, since I climb a variety of different routes, has a few offsets. It has some micro offset nuts made out of a different material uh, up through medium. I tend not to pack along large nuts when I'm doing standard multi-pitch trad climbing because I find that the smaller size cams are faster to place, faster to remove, sometimes offer better protection in multiple directions. Um, so uh, it's usually unnecessary to bring those. Okay, so that's uh, the protection that I bring. And then these are triple length runners, also called 180 centimeter runners. I used to carry double length runners. Now I really like triple length runners because they make quads quite nicely um, on anchors. And you can also use those for extending pieces of protection really far. So I have two of those fitted with two non-lockers each. I have two cordelettes. Uh, sometimes I may not carry two full cordelettes. You can usually, even on a route that has multiple trad built anchors rather than bolted anchors, you can oftentimes build your anchor with a triple length runner, um, maybe a single length runner and equalize protection that way. So it may not bring all four of these, but it's nice to have, especially when you're starting out and you're still learning how to efficiently build anchors, have two cordelettes with you. Um, and that way, if you have two trad built anchors, you can leave 
both want a cordelette at the anchor station below you and still have a cordelette. Another nice thing about cordelette and multi-pitch environment is if you have to come down, either you get off route or there's a storm coming in, you have material that you can cut and leave behind that's nice and long rather than cutting links off your climbing rope, which as you can imagine can start to become dangerous as your rappel links have to become shorter and shorter while you're escaping. Then I have four quick draws, two are really short. Those shorties I usually attach to the anchor as my first piece of protection or I may use it on bolts further up the route. And then I have two long uh, quick draws as well. And then I have eight single length runners. So those are 60 centimeter runners. Um, I find that eight 60 centimeter runners combined with the four quick draws and two triple length runners is usually plenty. However, if I have pitches that are gonna be longer than 120 feet, you know, if they're 150 feet, 180 feet even, then I may consider bringing even more. I might bring up to 10 single length runners, or if I know that the route is very traversing or has a lot of bulges in it, then I might bring more extension. So that's a really great rack to start out with as a beginner if you're looking for what to purchase. Okay, we're gonna take a look at what you might wanna do slightly differently if you happen to be leading pitches that are closer to your limit, are really long, or that take gear belays at each station, so there's not a bolted belay. Bolted belays are common if you can also descend the route or bail off the route, because those bolted stations will also serve as rappel points off of that multi-pitch uh, route. So if I'm climbing something that's you know maybe mid-10 and above, I might want more protection uh, to protect those cruxes better. Or if I'm climbing something more than 150 feet per pitch, then just due to the longer pitch length, if I want to adequately protect the pitch, I'll need more cams. And obviously if I have to build anchors, and each of those anchors takes three cams, that means six cams are gone for me to protect the next pitch. So I want to make sure that I have enough. So typically the first cams that I'll add to my rack would be a purple, which is a 0.5, a green, which is a 0.75, and a red, which is a number one. The reason I like those cams, these are kind of a medium sized cam, which means I can use them at an anchor and make a really bomber anchor. If I bring a lot of extra tiny cams with me, that might be a lot lighter weight, but it's not gonna make for really strong anchors. Oftentimes, this will provide me with better protection as well. If I'm leading those harder pitches, having a bigger cam in the pitch is gonna be much safer for me to fall on. However, I will oftentimes bring some smaller cams. These are all offset cams um, if I'm leading harder pitches of climbing. Harder pitches of climbing typically, not always, but typically will have smaller cracks in which to place pro. And I find that offset cams will, you'll be able to place those a lot of times where you otherwise would place a nut but because cams are faster to place on lead in particular, it means you don't have to hang on as long and therefore it can make the climbing go faster and more easily for you. And sometimes that can make it safer, less likely that you'll fall by bringing a small set of offset cams. Hopefully that's been helpful. Okay, this last rack that I'd like to take a look at is a typical rack that you might use on an alpine route. If you're gonna be climbing alpine routes where that contain ice and snow, obviously you'll need some snow protection, you may need some ice protection, and you may even need some pitons, especially if you have an ice hammer on the back of one of your ice tools. So we're gonna be mostly looking at alpine rock in settings where lots of people have gone before you and the likelihood of using pitons or bolts is very small. So first we're looking at cams. I have a single rack of cams from number three in black diamond, Camelot size, down to 0.3. So that's blue to blue. Makes it really light um, to carry. No real need to carry a lot more than that. Typically in an alpine environment, either the climbing is relatively easy, low fifth class, or the pitches are short, or you should keep them short to reduce the likelihood of rock fall and to reduce rope drag over all the bulging, uh, the bulging and protruding rock. Also have a rack of nuts. Notice this rack of nuts is a little bit more trimmed down, not quite the array and the small as I had before, but goes up much larger. So I have up to the large red and down to a small offset brassy. So it's good to have a selection of nuts too, especially when you're building anchors. Occasionally I will bring um, hexes, which have a little bit different shape than a nut and fit in different shape cracks. Just depends on the specific route that I'm on. 
and having more information on the specific route and the length of the pitches, the difficulty of the pitches, may cause me to bring more or less gear depending. For anchor construction, I have a triple length runner. It's still relatively common to find bolts in an alpine environment, especially for the descent. So having a triple length runner can still be nice, depending on where you're at. I have two cordelettes. Those cordelettes are long enough that I can use them to encircle horns and things like that to leave behind as anchors. And it also provides me enough material that I can cut the material in case I need to bail off an alpine ridge with incoming weather. I've included a different harness here. This is the Petzl Sita harness. It's a really lightweight, compact harness, so it's easy to carry inside my backpack because it has such low volume. And it's also really light, which is nice because it's less weight in my pack and less weight on me when I'm actually climbing. In an alpine environment and also sometimes in multi-pitch, especially if there's complex descents, um, I might bring a um, locker draw. Locker draw is really helpful for transitions. And in some of our advanced videos, we'll be going into what some of those transitions look like and how a locker draw can be really handy for that. I also have a double length nylon runner with a locking carabiner on it. This is what I typically substitute for my personal anchor system in the Alpine because it's a little bit more versatile. And then I have just five simple pieces of extension. Each one of these is a 60 centimeter runner with two knob locking carabiners on it. And I find that's usually sufficient for the technical climbing and short duration of that type of climbing in an Alpine environment with those short pitches.